um, my comment on that would be you said something that I'm starting to disagree with, mm. uh, and that's that the body doesn't have a protein storage mechanism. Mm. Because there's a lot of studies now that show it's highly conservative for skeletal muscle mass and heart tissue. So whenever you go into periods of protein deprivation, your body actually eats away at your organs like crazy, the splachnic bed, they call mm. it in the research. And the flux there is huge. So if you ever go into one of these states where you need protein, your body just takes it from your organs. It doesn't seem to affect function at all. But the next time you have a huge spike after that's happened, your body lays that protein down first in the splachnic bed. Mm-hmm. It replaces that storage. And and so I'm I'm starting to believe that the body actually does have a very effective storage mechanism for protein. But it's system wide instead of a specialized Correct. container. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And I think that that could offer a mechanism where the body's not going to sacrifice the hard earned skeletal muscle. Especially if, if you're sending it signals like I need this muscle. Right. Right. Exactly. You're you're causing all these triggers both at the genetic scale and Yeah you know, hormonally that <clears throat> makes your body feel like your muscle tissue is of paramount importance. Yeah. Um, and, and it is, everybody should realize that, you know, sir, even when it comes to cancer survival rates, the rate of survival is heavily dependent <laughs> on the amount of muscle mass you had before. Uh, sorry, we're having some technical issues here. I'm just I'm, trying to I'm distracting Kiefer. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so your your chance of survival from cancer goes up exponentially depending on the amount of muscle mass you yeah, have before. Yeah. So muscle is very important. It should be a concern for everybody. And like Josh said, when he was doing the hardcore caloric restriction, you probably – I mean you didn't look like you had a mu- much muscle mass at the time from the no, pictures. No, not at all. And I mean, yeah. You look more – I didn't have much fat mass either, but right. I just didn't have much mass. <laughs> right. 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 Um, so so the the fact that when I'm asking a person to restrict protein, uh, we're, we're getting, let's say, maybe 150 grams of carbs and uh, – and, and uh i'm switching i'm switching here but and and uh 1200 calories or 1400 calories of fat or whatever um that's gonna that's gonna spare us some muscle and then additionally i would say uh you know the more somebody's physique heads in your direction where you're where you're carrying um uh, quite a lot of muscle i you know then you're maybe at greater risk of losing some of that hard-earned muscle right and and I would recommend that if if a 32 hour protein restriction has any sort of noticeable consequence, you dial it back to a 24 hour protein restriction, and possibly even an 18 hour. Now, the the less time that we uh, do the protein restriction, the the decreased chances of the macro micro autophagy happening, and also the decreased quantity of time that they probably happen for. Mm-hmm. So I would say you know dial it up for as long as you can until you see performance um, problems. And so I'm doing. I'm doing uh, uh, two weeks of, uh, I'm sorry, two days a week, not back-to-back uh, protein restriction. And I don't, um, for my level of muscle that I want, um, it's, not, it's not hindering it at all. In fact, part of, part of my protocol, um, and, and this is not meant to be a, a slight against you guys, but I, I don't exercise more than a half hour a week. And sometimes I even miss that. And, uh, and it's no slight. It's just a difference in perspective, difference in, pro- in priority. Difference in hobbies, well, difference in... Yeah. Naomi can speak for herself. Ah. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that's a bit of a knock against the community. Oh. So, no. So, no, I'm kidding. I, okay. Yeah. A community that could, that could make mincemeat out of me, so right. I'm going to have to run. Exactly. You might want to be careful. <laughs> Luckily, nobody... This is an undisclosed location, so yeah. you're, you're okay. I think part of the community I'm in, they're... they're uh, um, there's a lot of uh, business executives and things like that and folks who, who if, you know, they already make very little time for exercise. And so if we can just maximize my, my sort of basic premise is the, the more perfect we can get the diet, the less exercise we're going to need to hit the goals I'm looking for. I agree with that 100%. And, and but, so you all are, are working out, um, you know, six times more often. I don't even know how many times more often, but you're probably enjoying it too, and you're you're reaping all that muscle benefit. And so, yeah, I only work out like three times a week right now. Really great, yeah. great. Same here. Okay, it's, you really don't really yeah. need it anymore. Well, I'm sure you guys know the CrossFitters and all that. Who well, it's not that they need that; they just they're they're hooked on it. Right, <laughs> right. Even though it's devastating to them, they'll just keep going. 
Right. Uh, it, it's interesting you said that half hour because technically once you get to the point where you want to be, the research shows you can maintain with half an hour a week. Yeah. As long okay. as you train correctly, okay. it really only takes half an hour a week to maintain. Yeah. And that's all the way up until you get into very high performance levels. Like, right. You know, I'm at a point where if, if I start trying to do once a week, I can come close to maintaining. I won't. I can maintain my muscle mass, but I'm not going to re- retain my strength. Yeah, uh, it goes pretty fast I at that see. point. Yeah, but but I can hold on to my muscle mass pretty mm-hmm. well. And mm-hmm. and that's a good point you made with eating all those carbohydrates on your protein restriction days. You're sending massive anabolic signals to the body, mm-hmm. uh, even even though there's no protein there you're styming any kind of degradation. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of want to selectively starve the body instead of this wholesale starvation. Um, yeah. Yeah. The the wholesale starvation, as I showed in that article, which some people for some reason called pseudoscience, it, <laughs> it really shows that when you deprive calories for that long, I mean, total calories, you're not eating anything. It's anti-anabolic. Mm-hmm. And because of that it lets catabolic processes run wild Mm -hmm. and you're avoiding that with your protocol yeah and and so that's what's what's great about that is that also overlaps with a lot of the anti-aging community who who just find that if they're in a ketogenic state for 24 7 that they just start feeling weird and they their sleep is messed up and i think i think it's because their body is just sort of switched into a mode where it, it'll help you like chase a rabbit if you see one and, and skin it with your hands you know and you're just sort of not functioning as a sophisticated member of society anymore i don't know what um so so bringing us you know out of that ketogenic state a couple times a week and uh and and uh getting these you know anabolic sort of processes um um, kicking in i think i think it's a great protocol and it won't if you're trying to gain muscle for a competition or have strength for um you know your crossfit games or whatever you might run into a ceiling at some point but the kind of protocol that i've put out there i'm saying for for 90% 90% of the public, um, you could you could get down to you know your 10% body fat or less and feel good. Right, you're not interested in going into the gym and trying to bench press 400 pounds. I'm interested in in, in looking good naked, you know. Right, so. oh, which which most people are. <laughs> uh, I can't think of too many people who are against that. Uh, oh, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> now that I say that, uh, there's counterpoint, but we'll come back to that later in the show. Uh, uh, why don't so, Why don't we take a break? We gotta cut to a PSA and other requirements of being at this station. Uh, plus, I have one of my favorite songs queued up that I think is uh, appropriate. Great. <laughs> oh, great! Says Keeper. yeah. We, we don't we don't necessarily <laughs> see eye to eye on musical selection. <laughs> You know what? Keeper? Every once in a while, we overlap. <laughs> I was enjoying but, the but friendship pop we were listening to when it's we were waiting. Rare. It was cool. So, all right. See. Well, uh, we'll be back in a 